Proper installation and use of electrical equipment. Before electrical equipment is used by employees, it must be examined to ensure it is free from recognized hazards that are likely to cause death or serious physical harm. Listed or labeled equipment should be installed and used in accordance with any instructions included in the listing or labeling. Completed wiring installations should be free from short circuits and from grounds other than those required or permitted by 29 CFR Part 1910 Subpart S. Equipment intended to interrupt current at fault levels should have an interrupting rate sufficient for the nominal circuit voltage and the current that is available at the line terminals of the equipment. Internal parts of electrical equipment, such as wiring terminals, insulators, etc., should not be damaged or contaminated by foreign materials, such as paint, plaster, cleaners, abrasives, or corrosive residues. Electric equipment that depends on the natural circulation of air and convection principles for cooling of exposed surfaces should be installed so that room airflow over such surfaces is not prevented by walls or by adjacent installed equipment. Because of different characteristics of dissimilar metals, conductors of dissimilar metals may not be intermixed in a terminal or splicing connector where physical contact occurs between dissimilar conductors, unless the device is identified for the purpose and conditions of use. Conductors should be spliced or joined with splicing devices identified for the use or by brazing, welding, or soldering with a fusible metal or alloy. Soldered splices should first be spliced or joined to be mechanically and electrically secure without solder, and then soldered. All splices and joints and the free ends of conductors should be covered with an appropriate insulating material. Parts of electric equipment that in ordinary operation produce arcs, sparks, flames or molten metal should be enclosed or separated and isolated from all combustible material. The disconnecting means used to de-energize circuits should be capable of being locked in the open position and be legibly marked to indicate their purpose. It is important to note that electrical equipment must not be used unless the manufacturer's name, trademark, or other descriptive markings identifying the organization have been placed on the equipment, along with the voltage, current, wattage, and other ratings as required.